Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. Today we're going to be working on still life. Oranges in a bowl. I have a similar uh, tutorial in my uh, channel that is with gouache. So that's a different medium. So I'm gonna do one in watercolor today. I'm gonna teach you about shadow and light and how to create that effect. And also just patterns itself. I also want to let you know to hit the bell notification button so you know when my video is up. Sometimes I try and keep them around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Standard Time, but it doesn't always happen that way. So let's get started. Okay, let's start by going over materials. I have a piece of Arches 100% cotton paper. I just basically cut my paper in half. I have a 10 by 14 inch pad. I halved that, then I took off about 3 inches. So let's see, that's like a seven by seven. Uh, seven by seven piece that I'm painting today. You can paint it much bigger, much smaller. I have my various brushes, my paints that I'll go over as I use them. <clears throat> uh, I, drawn in, I drew in the still life. Now I use the reference, I'll put the reference in the description box. It's just a reference, when I use reference from the internet, um, the royalty free reference, it's just to get the, um, the light and shadows. You know, I'm not going to paint exactly how that's going to look. It's just give me an idea of like where the shadows and the light are coming from. Um, you can also like imagine it, but it's sometimes better to either have it actual still life in front of you or, you know, have a photo of one so that you can see where the shadow and the light's coming from. And obviously in this one, the photograph, the light is coming from this way. So this whole area would be darker underneath because the bowl, mine's going to be a little different. I drew my bowl completely different. I'm just looking at it for reference of light on the um, oranges. Now I have an orange gouache still life tutorial in my um, page, you can, uh, on my YouTube, you can see it. Not everybody's familiar with gouache. Gouache is um, an opaque watercolor kind of paint and you can paint light on dark on that one, um, kind of similar to acrylic paint. Not as much though because it's still water based paint like watercolor, you can actually activate acryl, um, gouache just like you can activate watercolor. Like I put the water in here and the pans are dry, but you can reactivate them. Just same thing, you can do the same thing with gouache. Gouache has like a beautiful flat um, opaqueness to it. It's a lot of fun to paint with, you should try it out. I have a tutorial, um, like I said, a still life gouache tutorial. I should just more, more, more gouache paintings because you can kind of make gouache watercolor and gouache at the same time, where watercolor you can't. So gouache has a lot of um, things you can do with it. So I drew out the the bowl and I put the oranges in there and then I put one down here. Then It's not in the picture, but I just put one down here because I wanted to have it different. And we're gonna start off by using, uh, I'm gonna take my Grumbacker number 10 brush and I'm making some, mixing like a light not a light, but a bright orangey yellow first. With the medium yellow I have, a little bit of medium red. I'm going to get it fairly watered down. And I have my paper towel, of course. So I'm going to wash in this color, because this is going to be the lightest color. If it's bright, it doesn't matter. It's still kind of nice. We're going to wash in this tone basically on all of the oranges. So you can fill them all in here. Just keep filling them in. Now this, it doesn't matter. I mean, it would be nice if you don't get it really wet but it's good to have it a little bit wet. If you want to try the dry brush technique, I have a tutorial with the poppies. You could do that also. That would look nice with this particular exercise. So we're gonna wash in this yellow color. Same thing down here. And then we're gonna build on the orange Now here I could add, because it's separate from those, it's not going to bleed, I can go in and add an orange. I made a medium red, 
with some medium yellow. So it's a little bit deeper, deep, excuse me, deeper and darker. And we can just bleed that in on the edge here. Having it bleed towards this way and keeping that light up here. Now I'm cleaning off my brush, patting it on the paper towel, and then taking some of that because I got, didn't want to get too much over there. And this is very loose. It's not going to be a realistic orange tutorial. So I'm putting some up top here. I'm going to be grabbing in some more. I grabbed some crimson with some medium red. And I'll just dab that down in here. It's a little too wet when I want might want to get this just more damp than wet on wet to get it more concentrated. I'm going to throw in a little burnt umber too. I want it to be a little bit deeper and darker. And put some up in here, just dabbing in those tones. It's creating a halo effect. See how that dried? Let's tune in. Get this little halo effect. If you don't like that, you clean off your brush and you go work it in. Because watercolor is a hard edge paint, as I explained before. There. So it's blended nicely. It doesn't have to look so blended. If you want it not look that way, you can do that, that also. Now mixing up some more of this orange. This is still fairly, it's damp, but it's not super wet, so I can go in and add the tones in here. It's basically laying on top of that one. There are some watercolorists that do a lot of layering and take some several layers to get that exact tone that they want. Here we're doing it more loosely. Just going over that. Same thing down here. I'm going to be adding in the orange color. I'm trying to keep this edge lighter orange. I'm getting it wet over in here because I want to add a little green to that part of the orange where it's been broken off from the stem. Which would be right here. I drew like a little dot. So I'm going to grab some medium green, a tad touch of hookers. And I'm just going to dap. See, I'm just going to hit that right there. Just tapping in that. You know, and sometimes the oranges do have like greenish spots if you want to go and like add something like that. It makes it look a little more realistic. Like it just was ripened. I'm going to keep going over in here and here. Again, it's going to be lighter this way because the light's coming from this way. Adding in that deeper tune. Keeping these edges over here pretty light. I'm going to keep blending that. So I'm going to clean up my brush. Just have some water on, but not too much. This is where you have to play around with it and just blending it. And now that it's all wet, I go back in and grab that medium red medium yellow. You can even grab some burnt umber, throw that in there because it's going to be darker towards that other orange. Again, the light's coming from this way. That's the trick when you're doing 
still lifes. You want to see where the light and shadow are coming from. They can't come all. They can't all be coming from one place. So I'm going to keep adding more layers of this darker tone orange. Just dabbing it and blending. So it's still damp. And just see, I'm just like dabbing it. If it doesn't bleed, you can just go back in and clean up your brush and just take some water and mush it around. Grab some of that medium yellow, mush it around. Again, now I'm going to clean up my brush, paper towel, and just blend that. It started to bleed a little bit over here. I'm just going to try and clean that up. So we're getting there. We're just building this. The back orange here can still be light. It needs to be a little darker behind this one. Go ahead and some tone. It doesn't have to look, like I said, I'm not making mine look like this picture. I was just using it for reference for where the light is coming from. Because I can imagine it, but I might not get it right. It might look a little wonky. Okay, so it's blending that one. We'll fix that in a second. Clean up my brush. Go in and blend this. I grabbed it on the front, so I'm going to have to clean that up. This one did too, see? I make mistakes too, so I'm going to have to go clean that up. And when that dries, we can go in and add the tones. So that's too wet to go into this one. So we could work on the bowl, and we can go back to the orange. So the bowl, I don't know, any color you feel like it. You make blues, blue tones, orange and blue work well. Um, I'll grab some ultramarine. Let me scale back this. This is some ultramarine mixed with. I don't know if I want it this dark. I think I want a nice, pretty blue color. So I think I'll take that away with my paper towel. And I'll grab some cobalt. I use the Cotman watercolor. I'm sorry, not cobalt. Cerulean blue. I'm not saying cobalt. It doesn't want to open. Okay. There we go. It's pretty blue. It was empty. So that's pretty, you know, I don't have to worry about using my crappy brush because this is pretty loose. I'll grab some of that. And that's a nice blue. It would go great with that color, orange. All right, so I've gotten this loose to the consistency that I'm looking for. I'm going to go in and fill this in. Blue and orange are complementary colors, so they look, look fantastic together. Um, if you don't know much about colors and uh, complementary colors, we could do a tutorial on that if you're wanting to know how colors work and how when you mix colors they work. It's like the basic 101 in our class. Blue and orange, red and green, yellow and purple. And when you mix them together, you get brown. Mix all of them together, you get black, supposedly, but I really don't think it works out that way. So I'm just going to fill this in with this blue color. So this paper has got a lot of texture to it. So either you're painting it really wet to fill that texture in or you can have that dry brush technique I showed you with the poppy tutorial. So 
So we've got our bowl. And here we can add in some darker tones. I've had, I already have some ultramarine on the side here. I just throw that in fairly loosely. Because this orange is in front of it, it's getting casting a shadow, and then it's also in the shadow tones because the light is coming from this way again. You can go even darker than that, grab some indigo, get right in there. And bleed that color in also. And you see, now you're really seeing how it's lighter over here. And again, grabbing some more. There you go. Grab that cerulean blue. And pushing that across. I'll take some of it away now because I feel like it's too much. Just mopping it up with your brush, like so. All right, this that's fairly wet. You don't want to get next to that again because that's going to bleed. You can add some. Deeper tone indigo or something down here. If you put it up in here, that's fine, but it's going to bleed that way too. All right, heading back to the orange, we're going to fill that one in. This is still fairly damp. It's not too bad though. Adding another layer. We haven't done this one. I want to keep that one fairly light. So we're going to wash in this orange. I still want to keep it lighter than the other ones with the shadow. This one still has a shadow. That one, this one's in front of this one. So behind this one on the edge here should be darker. So I'm just dabbing in some deeper orange and let that bleed out. You can get it even deeper with some burnt umber and some medium red. Go like so. I'm just tapping in on the edge down here. It has a nice bright hue to it. And then here, Still want a little darker on the bottom here. So we're going to go fill that one in. And since this isn't wet, it's dried up, we're going to have to use our technique where we wash that and we move the paint around. Because remember, again, watercolor is a hard edge. So you're going to clean up your brush and you're going to push that around with clear water. There we go. At this point, I'm going to dry it and come back and we'll work on the rest of it. All right, we're back. So I did add a little couple more layers um, just now of some more orange just to pump it up a little more. I a little green in there. And now we're going to work on some greenery. I'm going to grab some of this hooker's green, medium green. And a little burnt umber mixed with that. Creamy texture. It's not too thick. It's not too... I'm going to grab some more burnt umber, actually. I'm going to start with a stem here. I'm going to put a stem on this orange. And then I'm going to go grab some of the medium green. Doesn't want to cooperate. 
Okay, we can just put a little leaf off that. Put another one here if you want. You can go right over that orange because it's darker. And if you want to put some leaves coming out, you can do that. If you like that, just to change it up a little bit. Again, we'll put some darker tones towards where the shadow would fall. Since I put that leaf there, I'll just pick up that paint that was underneath and put it back down again. All right, for the bowl, I'm gonna grab my um, five round Princeton Velvet Touch. I'm gonna grab some indigo. Let me get this mixed up because I don't wanna use this nice brush. Indigo. And some ultramarine. And we're gonna do a little pattern on the bowl Kind of like a chinoiserie. Put mine down there. I think in the other tutorial I had um, just simple stripes or something like that for the gouache one. This one, let's change it up. Let's have a little fun. So this pattern, like you don't have to follow this pattern. I'm so used to painting them that I just do them subconsciously and I just do like squirrels. See the little squirrel here. I wouldn't want this too loose. Do another squirrel. Another one coming here. And then off that I'll add little leaves. A stem with a flower. Simple petal flowers. You can do that with your brush. Just making little lines like this. And over here, put a leaf next to that. So you're doing some leaves off the squirrels. You can do another branch off of it, making a fun pattern. Yeah, you know, have a lot of fun with this. Do flowers. Like I said, I do this pretty quickly because I do them all the time. <laughs> Not everybody's used to doing that. For me, it's like writing my name. So just keep putting in the pattern, filling it in. You don't have to do all of it with flowers and squirrels. You can do some lines, some stripes like that. And lines down here. Some more leaves in here. You get the idea. And it would get a little darker as they're next to the dark orange back here. Like that. So then on the bottom, you want to want a background because it's gonna. It looks like it's just floating, right? Um, gray. You can do. I don't know. Orange and blue look great together. And then you think, oh, this is where you could screw up, right? You could paint the background and you hate it. I'm not going to paint the whole background. I'm just going to do like the table area. You could do brown. I'm going to stick with like a gray. So I have like this black over here. I'm going to mix some little indigo with this gray. I'm going to do like a blue gray. Lighting just changed. Weird. Super light, so you're gonna water that down. And then I dab it on the paper towel. Oh, see. There we go. Very watery. And I'm just working that gray across. And I'm not going to the edge of my paper. because I don't want that to do that. It has a nice look to not do that too. And we're getting very careful around the orange in the bowl. I don't really want it to bleed there. Now obviously, the light's coming this way. 
we're going to have to make the gray darker on this side because it's going to be casting a shadow from the orange and the bowl. So you want to get close to it, but try not to bleed into it. I don't have much room on this side to do a real big shadow with the orange. Keep grabbing a little more of that gray. Just dab it in there, but going outward like this, pushing it outward. And same thing with this. Just going to go in here, casting a shadow under the orange. You can get even darker if you want. That's fairly dark, almost blackish. To really give it that shadow effect. And going in here. And you get that nice shadow. So there you go. This is a still life. I mean, you can, like I said, go in and add the background if you want. Add some patterns to the background and the foreground. Have fun with it. Like, you know, if, like I said, the green, so that looks a little flat. We're going to have to go in and grab some hooker's green. Make it darker with burnt umber. Put a shadow in this one. And put the little veins if you want. You don't have to do that. You want those values just a little different. See, I made that too dark, so I'll just go in and take that out. But you got the idea. We've been talking about dark and light for a while now. But this is just a simple exercise in uh, still lifes. And still looks great. Um, you can grab whatever you have in your kitchen. Set it up sit it right in front of you and look at it that way like we did in our class in college um you know that's another thing if you can't can't download the photograph you can do that and actually that's kind of cool if you make your own still lifes and just paint that so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial today don't forget to hit the bell notifications button to know when i actually post a video and subscribe of course um thank you so much if you have any questions put them in the comment section you know i always try my best to write in answers i don't always get to it that day i will get to it um just because i'm busy like you and life's a little crazy these days so thank you so much again have a great day